now, before we transition to the Word, uh, we are going to take a few minutes and have a brief missions presentation. If you may or may not remember that in mid-August, a big group of us from the English service got on a plane and went to Honduras. And we had an adventure serving the Lord with some beautiful people in Honduras, some men and women of God. And one of them is here with us today. And uh, I'm going to be introducing this person later. He is the person who oversaw the building of the hospital in Siriboya, which is a jungled region of Honduras, Dr. Luther Castillo, who is here with us. So we decided, you know what? We never did give a report after that trip. Things got busy, and the report never got given. So I hope it's okay that we take a few minutes now. Our memory is nice and strong, right? We can remember a couple months ago that people went to Honduras. So we have a video that's been prepared, a four-minute video. We would ask you to watch this, and then I'm going to invite all the missionaries who are here to come on up so that we can offer a prayer for the people that we went to visit in Honduras. So Our missionary group, Good Work Servants, visited the country of Honduras from August 9th to the 23rd. We had a wonderful experience. We will share a brief summary. The first part of our mission trip was at the Ebenezer Rehabilitation Center for Men in El Bufalo, La Ceiba. The center is a Christian rehabilitation center for recovering drug and alcoholic addicts. During our prior visit, we had seen the needs of the center, and at this time, we were able to supply many of those needs. We donated a freezer, funds, pots, pens, bed sheets, and a monetary donation was given to the center. Also, each individual received a Bible and a backpack with toiletries. We had a wonderful time of worship, message, and we had an opportunity to pray one-on-one -on -one with them. The visit of this rehab center ended with a cookout where the men prepared the meal and we had the privilege of serving them. On the Sunday, the 13th, we left the city Voya, which was the main part of our mission trip. Sirivoya is a village seven hours away, traveling mostly on dirt road. We took with us five barrels containing medications, school supplies, backpacks, and other items that people needed. We were blessed to be joined by 500 primary care doctors and a surgeon. Dr. Luther Castillo, who is the founder of the hospital, was also there to assist with local logistics. The hospital only provides outpatient care to patients, but we were able to see approximately 1,500 patients, including a hand surgery emergencies, several other minor surgeries and procedures. We were able to give to each doctor, nurse, and volunteer a stipend, and the hospital received a monetary donation to help with repairs. At the school, we were able to give each child a backpack containing school supplies a Bible, and they were really much appreciated. We were also able to evangelize on the streets of City Void. We were blessed to minister to a group of teenagers and children who were on the basketball court, a person in the 50 of them. And there we shared the gospel and the love of Christ for them. When the invitation came to receive Jesus, many of them were eager to lift their hands and receive Jesus as their personal savior. Pastor Greg and some of the members of the team had an all-day workshop with 22 pastors of the region. The pastor received the discipleship materials for level one and two. I really enjoyed meeting with the pastors in City Boya. Uh, it's a part of Honduras where the Garifuna people group live. There's a series of about 10 villages, and some of these Garifuna pastors traveled over four hours walking to join us for a session to discuss discipleship and what does it mean to disciple new believers. They set us up by the seashore uh, with chairs, the breeze blowing in. It was a really good time. But the Garifuna people group is very interesting. They're descended from Africans who had escaped from slavery, mixed with the indigenous groups on the islands, and for centuries have practiced uh, a type of African paganism. So the evangelical Christian church among the Garifuna is only about 40 or 50 years old. And it occurred to me halfway through, I have the privilege of meeting with the spiritual pioneers of this people group. These are the people 
It will set the tone as this church grows and spreads. It was a tremendous honor and one which I hope I get the opportunity to do again. God's favor was upon us throughout the time we were there on this mission trip. We returned tired, but happy and very blessed. We are already preparing for a mission trip in 2019. We know God has called us to share his great love and we still have much more work to do. Because we do believe when we serve others, we serve Christ himself. Missionaries, I'm going to invite you to come up for a minute, and I'd like to invite Dr. Luther Castillo. We can't let you sneak away without embarrassing you a little bit here. So, uh, Dr. Luther, if you come up, and the people who went on the mission trip, come on, come on up. Don't be shy. It's great to have you. Um, and I'd just like to take a moment with them here, symbolically. A number of them are, are in other commitments today, but we have a few of the folks who are here. And I'd like to pray for Dr. Luther uh, Castillo before... We send him back to Honduras. He's here for a conference. He's a great man of God, a good friend of this church, and it's good to see him. He, uh, he was raised, I, and I, I, we should have him share his own testimony someday, but he was raised in that part of Honduras, uh, Garifuna, and uh, God has blessed his life, and uh, he took good care of us while we were there. He drove me all over the place, hours and hours, down bumpy roads, and took good care of us and just told amazing stories about his own journey. Uh, he was actually here in Boston a few years ago where he graduated from the Kennedy School of Government and has been involved in different ways with the Honduran government. And he's living in California right now, but uh, has a tremendous future in the Lord. His mother is a hardcore Pentecostal who prays for him. And there's a blessing on his life. And uh, he oversaw the building of this hospital and made it happen. There is no electricity in that region of Honduras, no electricity in the whole hospital. They use generators, they do what they can, and they manage to do surgery. And like I said in that one, like they said in the video, in one week we saw how many, 1,500 people. So what Dr. Castillo does is really exceptional, and it's a tremendous honor to be uh, a partner of his. And uh, so I'd just like to bless him. I don't know, Bernice, did you want to say anything briefly before we pray for him? No, we're good. But I just want to invite the church to uh, pray for Dr. Castillo. If I could ask you to stand up and extend your hand. And Dr. Luther, could you say, uh, and, and as they're standing, could you just say a quick hello to us here? I don't want to put you on the spot. Just say hi. Here. <laughs> hello, church. <laughs> God bless you all. It's a great honor for me. I'm so happy this morning to be here in front of uh, those beautiful people, but I'm here accompanying with the angels that God sent to those remote area with your support to give us a hand in those very far remote area. And it was a great honor for us and in the name of our people from Honduras, of our communities, we want to thank you and say from the bottom of our heart, thank you very much. God will continue to bless you and multiply what you gave to us. Sometimes it's difficult to measure the small contribution that each of one of you are giving to the people overseas. And uh, maybe a, an aspirin can make a difference, a prayer, a Bible, a pen, a book, and everything, and some, uh, some toy for the kids make a huge difference in the world. We have the opportunity to, has, uh, to have the presence of our pastor in this mission. It was inspiring because he's a man of God. That he has a humble heart. Everything that he touched, you know, he make a miracle. You know, he has a great impact in people in the communities. And that was... And that was so blessing. The people were talking about it, how he smiled, how he talked, how he transmit love to people. And we were very blessed to have this. And each one of our companions were doing a great job. I remember team playing with the kids and, you know, our sister over there taking care of people. We had a lot of patients every day, 400 people, 300 people. And, you know, starting at 7 a.m. and finishing at 4 and then in the night some people are coming 
and some mosquito was singing and <laughs> some bugs and everything. It's, it's a huge environment with different <laughs> species, but it was, in the name of the Lord, it was uh, glorifying to be there serving the people. Then uh, I become a medical doctor in 1999, inspired by this beautiful woman here, my second ma'am. She take care of me. Since I left the city, I left the village to come to the city Then I was 13 years old. Then I used to saw her, you know, running around with a white coat, doing a lot of things, taking care of kids and everything. And my brother was, you know, Mikey's here. Then my brother Mikey was almost one year old and, and he's out there and we were carrying him everywhere to the marsh, to the meeting, to the process, to the hospital, you know, doing a lot of things. And I was thinking, wow, well, I want to be like that woman when I grow. Then God gave me the opportunity for a scholarship that I went to Cuba and thanks God become a doctor. And since I was there, we were thinking, what we're going to do for the poor people before even become a doctor. Then we organized a student's brigade and every vacation to donate our vacation to work right there on the underserved area to our people who really need us. Then in the first year, we didn't know nothing about medicine, but we learned to, to, yeah, to take blood pressure. Then we say, all of us go and take blood pressure, you know? You know? I remember that day, you know, when you arrived to the village with the white coat and then the tetoscope, the people didn't understand that you are not a doctor. They think you are a doctor and and a lot of people came, and I was, uh, I remember that the night after I arrived, then I went to visit my cousin in the other village, it was Bataya. We used to walk two hours and a half to go to school and two hours and a half to return. Then I, I had some, some friends in the other village called Bataya, then I went and visited them. They told me, no, you, you should spend the night there, here. Then I spent the night there, and in that night, a pregnant woman go, go and knock the door because she was looking for a doctor to deliver the baby. Then, then I was not there. Then the midwife attend here and save my image, you know, save my life and everything. <laughs> and it was something exciting who build the commitment between what we do and we start to select young people from those underserved areas who were Garifuna people, African descendant, and indigenous people, farmers, Latinos, campesinos from far away, who didn't, maybe they dreamed to be a doctor, but they didn't have the opportunity because uh, the, the price of uh, anatomy book is the one, the money that our parents earned for our, for our entire year. Then we had the opportunity for that scholarships. And we, after we finished in 2005, we start this, building this small facility who become the first hospital in African descendant community in one almost 216 years of African descendant community existing in Nando. <laughs> then we don't have too much. We just receive a hit from the government. He removed 12 of our doctors in one day. Then we have to close many of our departments over there but we're still fighting, you know, we know this is a struggle. This is not a simple hospital, it's a monument of dignity for the poorest of the poor. And um, we believe and we strong believe that God will continue guiding us in this process, doing wonderful things. Maybe now we are in the, you know, in some spot with lack of doctors, lack of human resources, but we know that we will fly again. God will provide us hand to continue doing this wonderful work. And I just want to thank you, but encourage you to keep supporting this wonderful activity. Keep supporting those brothers and sisters who go like an angel to those underserved area where the people travel 24 hours, 48 hours to get a pill to get a bottle of pill because sometimes it's difficult for doctors to understand why a woman is arriving with five kids. And when, when, when the doctor is doing an anamnesis and asking the kids, what do you have? Then one of the kids, he, he saw his mom and like asking her, what do I have to say what I have? Then the mom said that you have a headache. Okay, he say I have a headache. The other one, no, I have a stomach pain, you know. The other one is say because I, I feel dizzy. Because 
she want to take some medication home because that's the only time in year that the people have access to take some medication and take them home because when they get sick, they don't have access to hospital. Women have to travel 15, 16 hours in bad condition in the back of the car to reach the more nearest hospital in the process of delivery. This is something God touched us and God bless us when we do this wonderful work. Thank you, thank you very much. And thank you the pastor for this wonderful opportunity. God bless us. Let's pray for uh, Dr. Castillo. Father, we thank you for Dr. Castillo, Lord Jesus. We join our prayers with those of his mother and of many, many others, Lord God. Father, to bless his life, Lord God. And Father, we think not just of him, but the, the thousands and really uh, hundreds of thousands of people who are suffering in the region that you've called him to serve. And Father, the way you use him and his efforts and, and the people that join with him, Lord God, to alleviate that suffering in the name of Jesus. We know that when we do it to one of the least of these, our brothers and sisters, we do it unto you. And Lord God, I pray for Dr. Castillo, Lord God, that you bless him, Lord, that, that your, his relationship with you would grow and thrive and that you would fulfill your destiny for him to the utmost, Lord God. We thank you for this team of missionaries that could come and just do our part to chip in. I thank you for the members of this congregation that gave sacrificially. I thank you that every penny counts before you, Lord God. We bless this man. We bless this ministry. We bless these missionaries in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you.